Hey everybody, welcome to my War Week themed video. Um, I couldn't even, you know, this is not a week that I could even fathom about doing like, you know, just one movie. Because, I mean, if you guys haven't heard or seen me talk about it before, war films is really what got me into movies in general. Like, I've, I've loved movies my whole life, and I've always had a connection to film, but I didn't actually start looking at film seriously until I got into war films. And you know how we all reach that point in, in our lives where we could think about that time when we started watching something seriously or starting reading something seriously? Um, well, that's, that's kind of how war films was. I mean, I was always obsessed with, you know, movies as a kid, but I did not start looking at it in a serious light until I was, I mean, I would say third grade. And so what I wanted to do with this video is do a little something special. And I'm going to kind of take you on a journey of the, the first days of me loving film the way I do now. Um, so I'm actually on, you know, I'm hanging out in my old neighborhood at, in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. And um, I'm getting ready to start with, with, you know, part one of this story. And that is at my old elementary school. And so I'm actually driving up on it right now, and there's a story of how that started. Yeah, right here, I'm actually right now passing my old elementary school. And this is actually where, you know, you know, it's where I started my, I don't know, I was always into history. And I always loved reading about history. I'm going to kind of do a UE and then I'm going to, you know, park down the street from the school while I talk about it. Um, you know, I was always into history. And I, you know, I had family that were in the military. And I, you know, always loved hearing, like, war stories, I guess you could say. And so I, from an early age, I remember always watching, like, you know, war movies and stuff. Um, you know, the, you know, Sands of Iwo Jima. A lot of the John Wayne type uh, war films, you know, I guess you could say war yarns of like the 40s and 50s. And I didn't really remember a lot of them because I was really, really, I mean, I was really young when I did that. I mean, probably like four or five, and I really don't remember that far back. But um, yeah, so when I was in, I would say third grade at this elementary school, I actually was in the library one day and I was just looking at the history books and I came across a war a world war ii book that was i would say about d-day i don't know if it was necessarily d-day or not but um yeah i can't remember if it was about d-day so but here's the school right there yeah so it was, i think it was about d-day and the front cover was like just a, you know, the a black and white picture of Normandy, you know, Omaha Beach. I mean, it was Omaha. I th I'm pretty sure it was Omaha Beach. I don't think it was Sword or Juno or any of those beaches, but I, I'm pretty sure it was Omaha because it had the American soldiers. And so I was like, you know, whoa, that's pretty awesome. And uh, I had to, I rented it and I brought it home and all of a sudden I was just like just completely intoxicated with what I was reading. I was like, man, this wasn't that, you know, long ago in, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it was really only like, you know, 40 or 50 years before that, um, you know, more like 50 years before that. But um, yeah, I mean, it was just insane reading about it and I was just in, just completely intoxicated. Well, my dad saw me reading about it. And he was like, you've, you know, you're just now, you know, starting to learn about that, you know, getting into that. You didn't have to go all the way to your, you didn't, you didn't have to go to your school library to read about it. And, uh, and I was like, what are you talking about? And so he walked me into like, I guess you could say it's his, um, it was his office area where he kept all of his storage and everything. And you guys will probably know what I'm talking about. If you, you know, if you know, if you know what books I'm referring to, but, um, Time Life came out with these books that were, I mean, I would say they're about two or 300 pages, probably like eight by 11 in terms of size, and they were hardbacks, and they were, you know, there's probably about 30 of them. 
30 or 40 of them, and they were all about different aspects of World War II. Well, I just started reading up on those, and I was just, like, obsessed. And I literally just became obsessed with um, learning about World War II. And so, and then that kind of leads to the next part of the story, where it was like a family tradition where every Friday night we would go get ice cream or we would go to, you know go out to eat and then I would go to Blockbuster and rent you know my brother would rent a video game and I would rent a movie and so I'm actually right now pulling up at my old Blockbuster that I really got into film at right now here we go here is my old Blockbuster it's actually been closed down for about 10 years now I would say and man, that was a sad day when they closed. I mean, I was, I mean, this was my life, and this place was the place to be on Friday nights, Saturday nights to rent movies. But, um, it's funny, I would say on this half of the store right here was the drama and action section. And it was in that section where I was walking along one night, and um, I actually had just gotten done. If you look way back there in the back, there's, let me see if I get my finger just right, Ugh, right here there's a pizza place there now but it was a like a, a mongolian barbecue place and my family knew the owners and we went there all the time like every friday night and um you know it was so funny it always took me so long to pick out movies that my family always joked around and said you know i didn't eat dessert they're like well we'll eat dessert you go ahead and walk across the street be safe about it walk across the street to blockbuster and go ahead and start looking because it took me at least an hour to look because i looked at everything uh, like I still to this day when I go to movie stop and so I was probably about fourth grade and I was walking around in the drama action section which is where they kept all the war films and I came across the VHS of the longest day which can which you know the 19 it's 1962 film um, 48 international stars all about the invasion of Normandy and, um, I mean, it's kind of like filmed in a docudrama kind of way where it's, you know, it has a narrative, but it's, you know, try, it's almost like documentary style. But, um, great, great film. But the front cover of the VHS was pretty much, it was just soldiers, you know, going out, getting out of the landing vehicles on Omaha Beach. And I think it was Henry Fonda that I think was getting out of I, I forgot who was getting out of it, but Henry Fonda, um... You know, it had his name on it, but it was just that. And I was like, man, that's the same as the picture that I had that, you know, was on that World War II book. So I was, like, really excited. And I was like, I got to rent this movie. I went to go grab it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's two tapes. It's two tapes. This is going to be an epic movie. So um, I rented it. My dad was like, oh, that's an oldie but a goodie. And uh, went home, and I was obsessed. I watched it twice. Three-hour movie. I watched one one night, and then I watched it the next morning. Oh, my gosh, I was just blown away by it so then i returned the blockbuster the next day i never went to blockbuster twice in one weekend but this weekend i did and i went and i was like man that looks like the guy or i was looking at a movie cover and i was like that looks like the guy that um you know was the captain in titanic and like i said i was always a history buff so i was huge into titanic history and um you know the white star line like history and ship history and submarines and stuff. I always read about all that stuff. The Titanic I'm referring to was the Titanic miniseries that came out a couple years before the James Cameron film that had George C. Scott as, um, you know, the captain, Captain Smith. And so I automatically saw Patton, and I was like, oh my gosh, George C. Scott. He is the captain in um, Titanic, and he was also um, the grandfather in Angus, another one of my favorite movies at the time. So I was like, I gotta get that movie. It was that iconic shot of him standing in front of the American flag, getting ready to make that speech at the beginning of the film. And um, I saw that movie, and I was blown away by it too. I was like, man, another three-hour movie. I watched it twice. I watched The Longest Day on Friday night and Saturday morning. I watched Patton Saturday night and Sunday morning. And whoo! From then on out, I just started renting every single war film I could get my hands on. Um, so that's pretty much the hit. I mean, I it ended up being like Stalag 17, uh, Bridge on the River Kwai. I mean, it went down the li down the list. And I think the third film though was The Great Escape with Steve McQueen and Richard Attenborough. And uh, so let's just say that started my love of film. I really started looking at films seriously, and really, and what I mean by that was I used to just look at films for entertainment purposes. I just was looking at films to be entertained. Um, 
after the when the war movie thing started, I was not even just looking to be entertained. I was looking to be informed, and not necessarily informed in the way of like everything that I'm watching is completely factual. Just being informed by opening my mind to the other, you know, um, just more educated ways of, I guess you could say, of thinking and how to look at film. Um, you know, war films dealt with a lot of what is the purpose of us dying for an enemy that, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know how war films always have those messages like that. And so it was really when I started thinking of that way and I was like, all right, cool. What are some other movies that star these guys? Um, the first one was mainly John Wayne and John Wayne, uh, was in Stands of Iwo Jima. And this is funny about that movie because one of my earliest memories when I was a really young kid, I used to always get up in the middle of the night and my, I'd get in trouble because I wouldn't be asleep and my mom would always be like, hey, it's just us, we're just out here watching a movie. And it'd be, and I have this vivid memory of when I was a kid waking up. I mean, I had to have been at least five. It was one of my earliest memories. And I saw a man get up in a tent and say that his name was Sergeant Stryker. And I never knew, you know, I didn't know it was John Wayne at the time. But when I got older, I knew who John Wayne was, and then I watched Sands of Iwo Jima, and that scene came up when he said, I'm Sergeant Stryker, or, you know, what he says, I'm Stryker, and I was like, oh my gosh, mind blown. I completely had deja vu, and I was like, this is the damn film. This is the film that I watched with my parents when I was like four or five years old. And um, so, I mean, I always had that connection. And so I started watching westerns with John Wayne because I wanted to st I started taking the actors that were in these war films and seeing the other films that they were in then it went to westerns and I became obsessed with westerns but then that branched out into every other genre of film that I'm into there's not a genre of film that I do not like um to this day and so I have war films to think of that and so um yeah that's my war film story that's my you know in fact the Longest Day and Patton were the first two VHSs I bought with my own money. And so, um, but that's my war story and uh, my, when I started looking at cinema story, I guess you could say. So I hope you enjoyed this little history um, of my love of film. And uh, I guess I will see you in the next part of the video. Okay, I'm having so much trouble deciding which of you three I'm going to talk about for War Week. Um, I love every single one of you, but it's just getting really, really hard, and I just cannot decide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys into the closet, and I want you to fight until the death. And the last one standing is who I'll talk about. <laughs> All right, everybody, I am here coming at you with, I mean, I guess I could say my top 26 <laughs> war films I own. I mean, I probably own like at least 100 war films, and, um, you know, I can't possibly talk about every single one of them, so I just grabbed about 25 of them. Some of them, you know, I'm that are still my favorites, I just don't, for some reason, I don't have right now in my collection. Um... I think one of the big ones that I could actually name offhand is Stalag 17, William Holden film, or a film with William Holden in it. It's one of my favorites. I think I traded it on DVD a while back because I was eventually going to get the Blu-ray. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure if they've came out with the Blu-ray yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they haven't released it like on a good Blu-ray yet. So I've held off on that. But, um... <clears throat> I have about 26 things. Some are a lot of DVDs. Then there's a bunch of Blu-rays. There's some Criterions. Got some documentaries. And these are all war films that I love. And I'm going to start with, I guess you could say, my top four or five war, war films. Check this out. I'm drinking out of my Star Wars cup. But anyways. 
Alright, my number one favorite war film is, you know, the one that you guys probably already know because you've seen the first half of the video, and it is The Longest Day. And basically this film is about the um, invasion of Normandy on D-Day, but it's like, you know, the 24 hours um, of the actual battle, the preparation, uh, the execution of the battle, and some of the aftermath of the first day. Um, it is a brilliant film. You know, maybe some historical inaccuracies, but for the most part, this film is just just straight up brilliant. I love it, and I you know loved it growing up. Basically, it's like three directors. There's a British director, a German director, and I think an American director. And uh, in order to get the authentic feel of the you know the sides of the story, you know the if whether you're um, you know German or you know English or British or uh, American, you know, they each have their sides of the story, so it doesn't feel biased in that way. So, definitely, you guys should definitely check this out. It has 48 international and famous stars. That's pretty, that's how they credit it. Everybody from John Wayne, Robert, Robert Mitchum, Henry Fonda, uh, a bunch of people. Kurt Jurgens, bunch of people is in this film. So I highly recommend it. Next is Patton, um, amazing film directed by Franklin J. Schaffner and uh, written by Francis Ford Coppola. And this film is just brilliant in how it's told, you know, it starts off as, you know, he's giving that famous iconic scene, he's giving that speech to the soldiers, and he's almost kind of like giving the speech to the audience. And then you see his campaign during World War II. It doesn't really talk about his whole life. It's just, you know, during the war. And it's really fascinating character study of a really complex man. So I highly recommend this film as well. And these are actually the two, like I've mentioned in the video before, these were the two films and A Bridge Too Far is another film. But these are two films that, uh, including Bridge Too Far, that really influenced me into loving film how I do. So, like I mentioned in the video, um, the first part of the video. Next is The Great Escape, starring Steve McQueen, James Gardner, Richard Attenborough, and it really has an all-star cast, and basically this is about the, you know, 1943 escape of a bunch of prisoners, the attempt escape, and the escape and the aftermath and so on and so forth. Brilliant film. Um... I'm probably kind of preaching to the choir when I'm actually talking about it, but I highly recommend this film as well. The next is actually a double feature pack that I have, and it's The Dirty Dozen and Kelly's Heroes. Now, Kelly's Heroes is kind of like an, a war um, yarn, I guess you could say. It's kind of a heist kind of feel to it. It's light comedy. It's just a light-hearted kind of war film that has some serious moments, but it stars Clint Eastwood, Telly Savalas, um, um, Donald Sutherland, Don Rickles, a bunch of other people. Harry Dean Stanton's in this film, and it's just a really, really fun one. It's always been one of my favorites. I just watched it the other day, and I could really watch it. It's one of those movies I could actually watch on repeat. And, uh, yeah. So, and then the next one you have here, The Dirty Dozen. I could probably not even need to, I don't even need to explain that one, because everybody has heard of that, and been inspired by it in some way, some filmmakers... Um, basically, you have a dozen prisoners that are given a second chance on a suicide mission, basically. And it's just has features brilliant performances by Lee Marvin, especially by John Cassavetes in a supporting role. And he was nominated for an Oscar for the film. And uh, it's just a great, great film. Next, we have Dawes Boat, the um, uncut version. I love the director's cut. It's a masterpiece, but this uncut version, it's like one of those, I don't, it's one of those things where when you love a film so much and, the, you know, if there's an uncut version, I kind of graduated to this. I'll watch the director's cut if I see it or if I find the Blu-ray for a good price, but until that day comes, this is how I'm going to be watching it. The uncut five-hour cut. Basically, it's about German um, U-boat men during you know, a mission during uh, World War II, the Battle of the Atlantic, and you get to follow them beginning of the movie 
clean shaven, young, clean cut, all that stuff. And by the end of the movie, for authenticity, ugh, I don't know why that, that came out weird. Um, Wolfgang Peterson actually had them grow out beards, kept them out of the sun, and they really, really looked like they were just aged and worn out. It's a masterpiece of a film. I highly recommend it in every form, really. Next, needs no introduction, really, is Schindler's List. This is a really, really great film. Heartbreaking, um, but very important at the same time. Definitely go this and you know show a probably like my favorite Holocaust themed films. Uh, yeah, this is just a masterpiece. Unfortunately, I have not bought the Blu-ray yet. I really want to. This is actually ugh, I hate I hate it because of it, but it's actually the full screen DVD. When it came out on DVD, Walmart for some reason did not have the uh, widescreen, and so I bought the full screen. So I just, whenever I watch it, I kind of act like I'm not, or I kind of, you know, imagine it's not full screen even though it is. So, <laughs> because, you know, I'm not really into that whole, I really hate full screen stuff. I don't like watching films outside of the aspect ratio that it was actually supposed to be shown in. Next, we have The Big Red One. This is the reconstruction version. Samuel Fuller's war masterpiece um, starring Lee Marvin, Mark Hamill, Robert Carradine, uh, Kelly Ward, and a bunch of other people. And basically this film is about a, the first infantry in World War II, and they're basically going through the whole war. You follow them through the war, and... Um, you know, it's an epic film. It's almost like three hours long. But the thing is, Samuel Fuller was the guy behind it. And he is such a great filmmaker. And it has a very personal and, you know, real, not necessarily real, but a personal um, feeling to it and closeness to it. Because he doesn't use huge, like, sets, huge sequences. It's very small and intimate and very low budget. And so when you're watching this, you might be like, man, this movie is kind of boba, like kind of cheap. That's not it at all. It's just... It was made on a lower, a lower scale, and it just really adds to the film. I think it gives it charm because of that. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. Um, Mark Hamill is brilliant in this film. I love it. Lee Marvin's really good too, but Mark Hamill I think steals the show. And this is one of the films that actually shows that he's more than just Luke Skywalker. He's more than just you know the Joker. He is this character. He is a soldier who, you know, has convictions as well and really can be complex. And I just think it's a great performance by him. Next is The Deer Hunter. Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, Meryl Streep in the Michael Cimino film. Basically, it's about, you know, a group of friends in a small town that it just shows how their lives are impacted over the Vietnam conflict. And, uh... It's, really, it's just a devastatingly powerful film. Very slow, for those of you who aren't really into like slow-moving stuff, it's very slow to start out with. But I promise you, it's just it's brilliant. I love every single second of it. Dang it, my, phone, my battery's running low on my camera. Next, we have Robert Altman's M.A.S.H. It's a nice comedy. Um, kind of a dark comedy war film. Slightly dated, but still fun. I highly recommend it. How can I talk about war films without mentioning Buster Keaton's The General? This film is just, you know, sight gags, comedy, and you guys have seen Luke's video already, so I'm not going to go more into this, but it's just a brilliant film. Next is Saving Private Ryan. I still have it on DVD. I don't have it on Blu-ray yet, but eventually I will. Um, Steven Spielberg masterpiece great film. This is definitely one of my favorite um, courtroom films, I guess you could say, and it is Judgment at Nuremberg, and basically it's about um, just a trial going on in Nuremberg, not the actual big trial that happened there, but it's based, basically it's, a, I think it's a fictional trial, but um, it just is powerful anyways because it just talks about the atrocities that some of the, um, you know, off officers um, of Nazi Germany just, you know, some of the atrocities they did. 
and it, it's a really powerful film, film a huge cast, uh, Spencer Tracy, Burt Lan Bert Lancaster, Richard Remark, Judy Garland, Maximilian Schell, who is amazing in this film, and this is, he won a Best Actor Oscar for this film, and Montgomery Cliff, and a really tragic performance, because you, he, you could see in his face that he's really struggling in his real life with all of his stuff, and it just really showed in the performance. Next is The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. Basically, this is about a general, um, or he's a British soldier, Clive Candy, and he's you're basically visiting with him, or you're with him throughout his life and his whole career in the military. Um, and it just talk, it shows how like society and life is changing. It is a, it is a brilliant film. The actor who plays Clive Candy is Ro Roger Livesey, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And... He was really young when this movie was made, and they made him up to look really old as he aged. And as you can see on the back right there, I mean, he's he was probably not even 30 years old when this movie was made. But yeah, it's a brilliant film. Next one I'm just going to show, I don't have the Blu-ray yet, but it's All Quiet on the Western Front. Brilliant film. I remember when I first saw it when I was younger after I read the book, I was just like, man, that was that is filmmaking right there. And it's came out in 1930 so all right before we get into the blu-rays i got a couple documentaries i want to show um one is showa but and that I, I forgot that downstairs brilliant holocaust documentary basically it's there is no archival footage it's just interviews by survivors perpetrators so on and so forth very powerful devastating to watch because it is really really sad but um it's still a great great must own for like you know history lovers historians and teachers and so on and so forth the first thing i want to talk about is ken burns documentary <laughs> i just dropped something out of here the war and basically this is just the Amer like it takes place like in an american town and they basically just follow some uh different people in america from different villages or different cities, and they just follow them through the war as they're telling the story of their life during the war. It's like kind of talking about the America's involvement in World War II. Uh, it is simply a masterpiece. And then my all-time favorite documentary ever. I've seen it countless times. It's Ken Burns' uh, 12 hour. I think it's 12 hours. 11 hour documentary on the American Civil War, and it's the Civil War. I have seen this so many times. I love it. I, I used to watch it on TV all the time. And uh, I just really love all of Ken Burns' stuff. But this one is the ultimate. Um, I at least watch it once a year. It's just brilliant. <laughs> My voice is like starting to go down. Um, next, I'm going to show... You know, I... I I got so many right here. Full Metal Jacket, Stanley Kubrick's film. I definitely think that basically you follow a character through basic training and then into the war in Vietnam. I think the first half of the film, which is during a basic training, is the stronger half. But I think as a whole, it's still a great film. I don't think it's the best war movie ever made, like some people make it out to be. And let me tell you, I mean, Stanley Kubrick is, if not one of my favorite, or not my favorite director, he's definitely my top three. And, uh... I think this film is great, but not not as good as I think Stanley Kubrick could have been at making it. I wish the the whole film felt like the first half in terms of what it covered, but still, it's a great film. It's just not the best war film ever made. Next is Quentin Tarantino's *Inglorious Bastards*, kind of a fictional fantasy set against World War II, and I know you all have. You know, I've seen this. Next is, as you can tell by the opening of this video, one of my all-time favorite films in my top 20, one of my favorite directors, and just an all-around amazing film, and that is Apocalypse Now. Next is, I guess you could say, two films in a Civil War series um, by Ronald Maxwell. One is Gettysburg, the director's cut. Gods and Generals, the director's cut. I highly recommend these if you're in the history, especially the American Civil War. Next, we have 
another one of my top 20 favorite films, Bridge on the River Kwai. It was actually one of the first Blu-rays I ever owned, too. I think I got it within the first month of having a Blu-ray player. And it's still one of my favorite, like, one of my favorite editions of a film. The transfer is just spectacular. It's just a great transfer. Next two are my a couple Criterion's Blu-rays. Um, first one is Terrence Malick's The Thin Red Line. Not everybody likes this movie. I love it for the poetic, you know, feel that it has. Very philosophical in some ways. And, uh, just really amazing to look at. It's just, a, you know, one of those spectacular looking films. Definitely think it's a, I think it's a masterpiece, and I actually prefer it over Saving Private Ryan. I remember when I was younger, I saw Saving Private Ryan. Loved it. And then I saw this. See, I was a lot younger, so I didn't really understand some of the other serious stuff in this film. And as I've gotten older, this actually, I prefer it over Saving Private Ryan, which I still think is a great film in its own right. But this, in terms of emotion and what it covers, handles, I think, so much more. So, um, basically, it's about the Battle of Guadalcanal during World War II. As you can tell, most of these things are about World War II, not necessarily just about World War I or Civil War. Um... World War II is like my specialty in regards of um, loving of war films. Next is Paths of Glory with Kirk Douglas, directed by Stanley Kubrick. Um, whew, words can hardly explain how this movie, this movie is just so powerful and how it, you know, it kind of makes a statement about why are we fighting this war when the generals that who had the argument in the first place are just sitting up in their little, you know, houses pretty much and just telling everybody what to do and basically this film is um, an anti-war film in that way and it's just contains some of the best tracking shots ever put on film I think it's just a, a very great film as you can tell I'm kind of losing my voice now so I want to thank you guys for War Week um, for watching War Week I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed my um, Apocalypse Now homage at the beginning of the movie or at the beginning of the this video and I hope you enjoyed my second skit which I thought was pretty funny too um, I think it's some really weird stuff <laughs> but anyways thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day